Hi friends, welcome back to our series of sessions on sensors and transducers. Today we shall be discussing about the two important abstraction type flow meters, venturi meter and orifice meter. Venturi meter is a type of a flow meter that works on the principle of Bernoulli's equation. The device is widely used in water, chemical, pharmaceutical, oil and gas industries to measure the flow rates of fluids inside a pipe. The pipe cross-section area is reduced to create a pressure difference, which is measured with a manometer to determine the rate of fluid flow. So the venturi meter is a differential head type of flow meter that converts pressure energy into kinetic energy. The venturi meter consists of four parts, a cylindrical inlet section, a conical convergent section, a cylindrical throat, once again, and then conical divergent outlet. This is the conical divergent outlet section. There are two tappings on the venturi meter for pressure measurement. The upstream pressure tapping is located at a distance of one half of the diameter upstream of the convergent entry, while the downstream pressure tapping is located in the throat as we are seeing in this figure. The cylindrical entrance section for venturi meter entrance is a straight cylindrical section with a length of five to eight times the pipe diameter. That's the, if the pipe diameter is D and the, this is all the entire section that will be five to eight times the cheaper. The convergence conical section the venturi meter tube diameter gradually decreases from this to this. The conical angle is normally 21 plus or minus 2 degrees, 21 degrees plus or minus 2 degrees. While the liquid flow inside the venturi meter, the velocity of fluid increases at the expense of decrease in pressure. Then cylindrical throat, the diameter D, consists of a minimum venturi meter diameter. In the throat section, the velocity is maximum and the pressure is minimum. Normally throat diameter is one third or one fourth of the inlet pipe diameter. Then the diverging conical section, the tube diameter gradually increases. So the pressure is built up again to the original inlet pressure. The cone angle is 5 to 7 degrees or and 14 to 15 degrees for the outlet cone. The two cone angles 5 to 7 degrees and 15 degrees standard for the outlet cone. So the materials used for the venturi meter is, this is the cross-sectional area which we are seeing. Here is the throat, this is the converging section and this is the diverging section and this is the diameter of the pipe. Small size venturi meters are made of brass, glass or bronze and large venturi meters are made of cast iron, steel or stainless steel. That's the materials for venturi meter. If you see the working principle of the venturi meter, when a fluid flows through a venturi meter, it accelerates in the convergent section and then decelerates, retards in the divergent section. The pressure difference between the upstream section and the downstream section and the throat is measured by a manometer. Using that differential pressure, applying Bernoulli's equation and the continuity equation, the volumetric flow rate can be estimated. We see the equations. This is the Bernoulli's principle, which states with reference to pressure, the kinetic energy, and the gravitational potential energy of the fluid fluid. This is the mathematical equation of a Bernoulli's principle, where P is the pressure inside the pipe, rho is the density of the fluid, G is the gravitational constant, V is the velocity, Z is the elevation or head, A is the cross-sectional area of the pipe, and D is the diameter of the pipe. And this is exactly what is the Bernoulli's hand. 
equation when we have in the thing. So suffixes one and two are used to denote two differential areas. One denotes the cylindrical inlet and two denotes the throat section because we have at two places we have the manometer fixed. Now as the pipe is horizontal, there is no difference in elevation of pipe center line. So Z1 is equal to Z2. So rearranging the above equation, we get P1 minus P2 by rho g is equal to V2 square minus V1 square by 2g. Here you will see the P1 minus P2 by rho g is given as H. So H is equal to V2 square minus V1 square by 2g. This is taken as equation 1. Now, if we apply the continuity equations between the same sections 1 and 2, then we have A1, V1 is equal to A2, V2. This is the continuity equation. Q is equal to area, cross-sectional area multiplied by the velocity. Or the same thing if you take in terms of V1, A2, V2 by A1. Then V1, if we replace V1 in equation in this, equation 1, and solving we get V2 is equal to A1 by A1 square minus A2 square, square root of 2GH. So if you see Q, Q is equal to A1, A2 V2. So A1, A2 by square root of A1 square minus A2 square into. So this is the total discharge quality, quantity of flow that we are getting through the venturi meter. Q represents the theoretical discharge of the venturi meter in ideal condition. But in actual practice, there will always be some frictional losses. Hence, the actual discharge will always be less than the theoretical discharge. So, to calculate the actual discharge, the Q value is multiplied by CD, coefficient of discharge. So the actual flow rate through the throat of the venturi meter is given by the equation Q actual is equal to coefficient of discharge into A1, A2 by A1 square minus A2 square in 2GH. A1 is the cross-section area at converging section. A2 is the cross-section area at the throat. G is the acceleration gravity due to gravity and H is the pressure head. So for a actual coefficient of discharge, will always be less than 1. So the typical range of coefficient of discharge for a venture emitter is 0 0.95 to 0.99. That's how the, the value of the venture emitter discharge coefficient differs from one flow meter to the other, depending on the venture emitter geometry and the, and the Reynolds number. You see the applications of venture emitter, they find very application, very wide application in all process industries. The major applications include used in engine carburetors, automobile sector to measure airflow, and they, they are used in process industries like power and all piping industries to measure and control process flow in the medical industry to measure the blood flow in the arteries and in the fluid flow inside the pipeline is always used in oil and gas industries. So if you see the advantages of venturi meter, we provide accurate results. The accuracy of the venturi meter is not dependent on temperature and pressure inside the pipe, no moving parts, very low energy loss, wide applicability for water, suspended solids, gases, slurries, chemicals, and dirty liquids, etc. High discharge coefficient and very low pressure drop. Venturi meters can be installed in a horizontal, inclined, or vertical direction, very less chance of being clocked. These are all the major advantages of the uh, venturi meter. And the final one being the pressure recovery of venturi meter is very high as the discharge pressure is almost near to inlet pressure. To see the disadvantages of venturi meter, these meters are large in size, so difficult to install where there is space constraint. And then expensive as compared to other type of flow meters. Limited range of flow measurement. And then they are not suitable for very small diameters of the plate. Then comes the orifice uh, plate, orifice meter. The orifice meter is 
made up of a chrome steel or phosphor bronze or nickel or monel an orifice meter provides an easier and cheaper arrangement for the measurement of flow through a pipe an orifice is a thin circular plate with sharp edged concentric circular hole in it the main part of an orifice flow meter may be a chrome steel orifice plate which is held between flanges of a pipe carrying the fluid whose flow is being measured an orifice plate is fitted between the flanges which are at a certain distance in order to maintain laminar flow conditions the pipe carrying the fluid is straight openings are provided at two places a and b for attaching a discharge or a differential pressure sensor which is nothing but a youtube manometer as shown in the figure the area of the orifice is for smaller than is far smaller than the cross sectional area of the pipe the flow from the upstream is uniform and adjust itself in such a manner that it contact contracts until a section of downstream the orifice plate is reached at vena contracta so that is exactly what we are saying this is the downstream which is which we are normally calling it as a vena contracta and uh, this is the upstream and this is the downstream and we have the orifice plate fitted at the flanges here so youtube manometer one arm of the manometer is connected here and the near at the vena contracta where the flow is varies and this is the youtube manometer and this is how the pressure gauge at both uh, the thing we are connecting and then this is the orifice plate which we are fixing here if you see the operation of this these are all the different types you have uh, single chamber dual chamber and then double block breed and integral orifice plates we have multiple thing then eccentric orifice plate orifice plate is not exactly at the center then segmental orifice plate where you have a segment not complete circle then conical shape orifice plate then you have edge orifice plate then you have multi hole orifice plate so if you see the this plate is inserted here at the flanges and if you see the operation the fluid having a uniform cross sectional flow converges into the orifice plates opening in its upstream that is the left side what we are seeing here when the fluid comes out of the orifice plates opening its cross section is minimum and uniform for a specific distance then the cross section of the fluid starts diverging downstream that's what we normally call it as the right side this is the downstream and this is the upstream and here we have the vena contracta the other differential pressure arm of the thing then at the upstream of the orifice before the converging section of the fluid the pressure of the fluid p1 is at the maximum as the fluid starts converging and enters the orifice opening its pressure drops when the fluid comes out of the orifice opening its pressure is minimum p2 and this minimum pressure remains constant in the minimum cross sectional area of the fluid flow stream this minimum cross sectional area of the fluid obtained downstream from the orifice edge which is named as vena contracta the manometer attached between points a and b records the pressure difference between these two points which becomes an indication of the flow rate of the fluid through the pipe when calibrated when considering the fluid flow to be ideal and downstream pressure tapping to be at vena contracta by applying bernoulli's theorem between a and b and this can be orifice meter this coefficient of actual uh, discharge can be calculated similar to the venturi meter which we have done previously and here cd is the coefficient of discharge this equation remains same for both orifice plate and venturi meter the only difference being the coefficient of discharge for orifices in pipes vary varies from 0.6 to 0.8 whereas it is 0.95 above 0.95 for venturi meter but for orifice meter it is 0.6 to 0.8 then if you see the specifications of a, a venturi meter the length of the orifice can be 10 mm to 800 mm the diameter of the orifice plate can be 0.5 times the diameter of the pipe 
though it may vary from 0.4 to 0.8 times, up to 800 degrees Celsius operating temperature can be used for this and the operating pressure is up to 400 bar pressure of the fluid can be used whenever we are using the orifice plate. Then the main applications of the orifice meter, they're used at several places to measure flow rate, such as water treatment plants, natural gas, petrochemicals, oil filtration plants and refineries, almost all the process industries, wherever there is piping involved within the pipes, whether gas or liquid flowing, this can be used. The concentric orifice plate is used to measure flow rate of the pure fluids. The eccentric segment and segmental orifice plates are used to measure flow rates of fluids containing suspended materials such as solids, oil mixed with water and wet stream, wet steam. The advantages of the orifice meter is the very cheap compared to other flow meters like the venturi meter and so on. The direction possibility can be vertical, horizontal and inclined. The space required for installation is less. It is usually thin enough to fit between an existing pipe size. The maintenance cost is very low. It offers very less pressure drop. The construction and design of this orifice plate are very simple. It is capable to determine a wide range of flow rates than that the main, that is the main advantage. It is very cheap and easy method. It has a predictable characteristic and requires very less space and it can be used to measure the flow rates in larger pipes. The, the, it also has some disadvantages due to limitations in the vena contractor length. The minimum pressure for reading the flow is sometimes difficult. In the venturi meter, downstream pressure can be recovered, but in orifice meter, downstream pressure cannot be recovered. It requires a single phase of liquid, cannot have dual phase like uh, fluid, both gas and liquid. The orifice accuracy can be affected by the viscosity, density, and pressure of the fluid. It requires a straight pipe for good precision and uh, accuracy. The 40% to 90% overall head loss of the differential pressure that happens. The obtained coefficient of discharge is low. In certain cases, it becomes difficult to tap the minimum pressure P2 due to the roughness of the inner wall of the pipe and sharpness of the orifice plate. Pressure recovery downstream is poor. Chances of clogging the orifice when the suspended fluids are being used. The orifice plate gets corroded and due to this, there may be inaccuracy in determination of the flow. The orifice plate is, has too low physical strength and that's the main, uh, so these are all the disadvantages of the orifice plate. So that's all we have for if you final venturi meter and orifice meter comparison, if you see complex in design and easy to fabricate, venturi meter large space requirement, lower space requirement, low energy loss, and comparatively more energy loss in orifice uh, meter. And it is venturi meter is expensive, whereas orifice meter is very cheap. And uh, uh, venturi meter has high coefficient of discharge and low coefficient of discharge. Venturi meter there is a high pressure recovery and pressure recovery is relatively less in orifice meter. So that's all about the venturi meter and orifice uh, meter for this session. Thank you for your time. Hope you have uh, enjoyed the session.